As of the time of this interview, the rise in global uncertainty has seen gold spike to around 21-month highs, often regarded as a barometer of risk aversion. Where could we see gold go from here, and how can you get exposure? Let's turn now to the fund manager of the Junior Gold Fund, Angelos Damascos. Uh, what do you make of what's happening at the moment in terms of the reasons that you've seen this gold price spike? Well, Jeremy, obviously the geopolitical risks have risen substantially in recent days, and this is what uh, the market's attention is focusing on at the moment. Uh, there is the, the obvious open spot between Russia and the, the Western uh, allies, uh, but now we have the much more uh, dangerous and very important upheaval in the Middle East, not only in Syria, but also in Saudi Arabia, between uh, Yemen and Saudi Arabia. So geopolitics are fairly, very much in the driving seat uh, with regard to risk aversion and therefore naturally investors are looking to safe havens such as gold and are pushing the price slightly higher at the moment at the level where we believe has been the technical resistance for some time now, for, for almost two years. Uh, and if we breach well above, convincingly above the, the 1370 level, we could see gold run up to 1400, perhaps 1500 very quickly. Okay, let's, let's bring up a chart of gold so we can get a precise understanding about what it is you're saying here. And uh, these, this is, you can see here clearly the, the technical levels that we've been talking about. Uh, we haven't seen 1400 for a long while in the price of gold. Um, is it just a question of waiting for an escalation of the political tensions we've got? Or do you think that gold is a, a lagging um, price indication? Do you think that we've got more upside to go because of where we are in terms of the, of the global political developments? Mm. Well, the geopolitics could very well be the catalyst that pushes the gold price convincingly about those resistance levels. But uh, as we have discussed before, the momentum and the development of the gold price action has been supported by the overall uncertainty about the macroeconomics uh, in, in the global economy. And we have seen, for example, the yields uh, of corporate bonds and, stay, uh, and uh, government bonds rise significantly recently that highlight the, the expectation that inflation is rising and might not be contained by, federal, uh, by, by the Federal Reserve and other central bank actions. And the reason for that is that uh, the central bankers, in effect, have their hands tied because the global economy is so highly leveraged and so indebted that even a slight, uh, a slight increase in, in uh, interest rates causes a lot of uh, trouble and a lot of worry among the corporate world. I think we've got a chart here showing the US 10-year yield, and it has just pulled back uh, from the rise to almost uh, 3%. So what you're saying is you're fully expecting this chart to continue that upward trajectory we've got on the right-hand side. That is the expectation uh, at the moment because, for example, the tax cuts introduced by the Trump administration in America are expected to widen the, the fiscal deficit of America tremendously. And it is uh, envisaged that the 2018 issuance of U.S. Treasuries will be more than double what they issued last year. So there is a lot of uh, new paper coming to the market at a time when yields are rising and investors are much more cautious about buying bonds. So uh, it is a, it's a very, very fragile environment. Furthermore, with the trade wars that uh, the U.S. has started with China, we cannot discount fully the potential that uh, this trade war, at least from the Chinese side, could not spill over into some sort of a financial war. We, we know that China is the biggest buyer of U.S. Treasuries because of their very large surplus of uh, foreign exchange. So if they start slowing down or stop buying Treasuries, who is going to buy all those bonds? Yields could rise significantly higher. Mm. Um, in terms of um, uh, what people are buying, are they buying bullion? Um, we've heard a lot, and indeed from you as well, about uh, ETFs and how that's helped the price of gold. What, what, is, what, what are gold holdings looking like at the moment? Who's buying and what are they buying? Well, uh, clearly investors react uh, uh, instantly by buying bullion. Uh, that is the first reaction of most uh, uh, wealth managers and sort of fundamentals-driven uh, investors. Uh, and that's why we have seen, since uh, the bottoming out of 2016, we have seen a very steady rise in the assets uh, held uh, by, by uh, which, which back the, the exchange-traded funds. And these are the instruments that most investors prefer in order to enhance the liquidity of the portfolio. Uh, so we see a steady growth in the asset base 
of, uh, as of, of gold that backs ETFs. Uh, and, and we can see here that uh, from this chart that uh, the purple uh, band, which is North American assets, are represented by the North American exchange traded funds that are the most popular and most uh, widely used instrument, followed uh, in second place by the European register funds. Uh, and then Asian and other, uh, which are very small uh, here in relation, but that doesn't mean that Asian investors do not buy ETFs. They, they mostly use the American and, and uh, European traded instruments. So we can see that uh, in terms of uh, tonnage held that backs those ETF holdings, there is a constant growth uh, since 2016 and a ve very much a tendency to go higher. So we, we have seen this uh, supporting the gold prices and, and we believe that uh, the gold equities have lagged the development of, of the gold price and, and are appearing at the moment significantly undervalued in relation to the, the cash flow potential. Mm. Um, I said at the top uh, we'd be talking about how to get exposure to this. You talk about buying bullion, we all know we can buy gold, be it bars or, 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 or currency um, in the open market. Um, you're a fund manager of the Junior Gold Fund. What are you buying at the moment? What, what, is, what is the top of your list as a fund manager? Well, we, we have always focused in the smaller capitalization companies because we believe they offer a higher operational gearing to the gold price. And this is the, the instrument we offer to our uh, investors as a, a sector allocation tool. Uh, so it, within the universe of the stocks that uh, we have uh, held for a while, there are two or three that have performed extremely, extremely well and have risen to the top, uh, say, top five positions of our fund. Um, and uh, we, we believe that these companies have a lot further to go uh, because they have just started uh, the next phase of their operational development. We mm. think they have uh, very good promises. OK, let's, let's look down that list. And if I can, let's start off with Alexco Resources. Mm -hmm. um, what is it about Alexco Resources you like so much? This well, we can see here. It's listed yes. in New, both New York and at the Toronto Stock Exchange. That's right. Alexco Resource, uh, Resources is a, a, a relatively small market cap company, 180 million uh, Canadian. Uh, but it has about 27 million uh, in cash and no debt. Uh, but importantly, it controls a very large uh, silver mining district mm. uh, in, in the Yukon called the Kenno Hill, uh, which contains more than 68 million ounces of uh, silver in resource. Now, they had suspended, this is a past producing mine, which suspended operations sometime in 2014 because of the low silver prices and the bear market at the time. And since then, the company has been working to refine the, the economic assessment of the mine and, and refine the feasibility study for reopening it. And they have made very serious, very uh, serious and, and uh, steady steps towards the commercialization. And, and we believe now that the, this mine will be put in production before the year end. So that, that will be transformational for the company, will uh, generate a significant free cash flow because they estimate their all-in sustaining costs to be in the region of $12 an ounce as opposed to $16, $17 for the silver price now. Um, and, and if we are right about the development of the precious metals price, and we know that silver can be much more volatile than gold, mm -hmm. therefore rise to significantly higher levels, this uh, company could uh, be worth a multiple of what it is now. Okay, so share, share price here, 149 and a half. What are we talking about in terms of share prices when talking about multiples? Yes, I, I think uh, I, I was going to point out that uh, if you were to look at the chart uh, a little bit further back to 2016, you, you would have seen that the company has already made a, a, made a significant transformation in mm -hmm. its operations. And it's now in this tighter band of trading that uh, we believe could break up above the, the, the resistance line and therefore uh, you know, it could be worth multiple what it is today. Mm. Okay, let's move on to the second one, King Rose, uh, King Rose Mining. Um, and um, explain what's going on at King Rose, another one of your top five holdings. Yes, King Rose uh, is a special situation in the sense that it went through some dramatic times and a restructuring process uh, back in 2016. Uh, they had uh, significant debt at the time 
they were highly leveraged and they suffer from flooding in one of their main in, in their main mine and suspension of operations that starved it of cash flow and forced it into administration now since then they have completely restructured the balance sheet they ag agreed a, a, a work over plan with their creditors they converted all the debt into equity so now the company is debt free it has a very solid balance sheet uh, and it has started operations uh, that in the last six months uh, turned around and produced significant free cash flow. Mm. So it is now a very healthy operation and we think that uh, uh, not only they have a lot of prospects with their way lingo deposit that they are mining now, but there is another uh, mine, the one that flooded before, the Salantanto, uh, that, um, uh, that uh, could be put into production later on this year, perhaps early next. Uh, so it, there is a very definite and clear growth path in the company and, and bearing in mind that this is uh, on average uh, very high grade deposits. They exceed 8.7 grams per ton mm -hmm. on average in the results, which is very high grade indeed. Uh, and even in the last uh, six months of operations, they managed to contain costs uh, at an all-in sustaining cost level of $712 per ounce. So it's a very healthy operation producing uh, healthy cash flow and we believe has the, the chances to grow significantly. Technically it seems to be magnetised this uh, level here, this support level here at uh, what just over 7 cents, uh, yes. here we are now 7.3. Um, it, what's it going to take to get out of this band of, of, of trading, this recent band of trading we've had? Well they have recently announced a very encouraging trading report for the last uh, six months uh, and I believe that the market has yet to absorb it to absorb it and, and understand that this, the operation has really turned around the corner, it's now at a much healthier base. Uh, we also have to bear in mind that the restructuring and the conversion of the debt to equity happened at around four cents. Mm -hmm. uh, so already the share price implies a significant premium to the restructuring uh, of the financing. Uh, and uh, I believe that once this growth tra trajectory is confirmed, uh, the, the, the valuation should shift significantly And you're happy higher. that they will be confirmed, these new trajectories for growth? Well, as far as we, uh, we can see so far, they have uh, done a tremendous job right. restructuring the first mining operation. Now, if mm. they are successful in dewatering the other mine and putting it back into production, that would be kick it into a significantly higher gear of production and therefore much more profitability. Yeah, um, as we've seen as well, you not just do gold companies but also silver. America's uh, Silver Corporation is another one that uh, appears in the top five. Yeah. Um, what do you like about this company? Well, again, it's a growth story. It's a company that uh, went into a restructuring a lot earlier in 2015 with uh, change management and a completely refinanced balance sheet. Uh, but uh, the, what we find interesting in, at this point in time is they have recently uh, put into production a new mine called San Rafael in Mexico that has started contributing uh, very strongly to free cash flow. So now uh, the all-in sustaining costs are expected to drop well below the $13 per ounce that they have been operating at for the last uh, six months. Uh, and therefore their operational gearing again to the silver price is considerable. So um, we, we are quite uh, confident that uh, the silver price will rebound along gold because silver is always uh, a corollary to, as a safe haven asset to gold, but it always lags a little bit uh, uh, the, the price development of gold and then suddenly sort of catches up. Um, and uh, we like having an exposure to some solid silver plates. Yeah. OK, all right, three of your stocks in the top five. Angelos, thanks indeed for dropping by to talk about that. And also uh, the price of gold as we see uh, an elevated uh, risk level within uh, global politics, which has pushed the price of gold up recently. Where does it go over the summer? Well, certainly expectations are that if this uh, recent spat continues and uh, elevates, uh, then, of course, that will reflect itself in the price of gold over the summer. That was Angelos Damascos, the fund manager of the Junior Gold Fund. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.